We're gonna go see the FNAF movie. It's like 9 a.m. right now in the morning as I'm recording this. It is uh, very much morning. <laughs> um, but I've been waiting my entire life existence for this moment in time. I've been a FNAF fan ever since uh, FNAF 2. And uh, I personally cannot wait to see this movie. Unlike the many others, just wanting to see a horror movie and seeing the funny bear just twerk on screen for 20 minutes. So, um, thank you Scott Cawthon for everything that you've done. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, I'm gonna do what I did with the, uh, the, the Mario movie and, uh, just kinda shoot some scenes and then dub them over in editing. So, uh, yeah. Let's go, Faz Gang. We're gonna spring a trap in here. Okay, like seriously, I wasn't joking when I said I had to wake up early to see this movie. Basically, what happened was, uh, we booked tickets to see the early show, because literally every other show after that was packed. Like, to the extreme. So what we had to do was, we had to go early because of the, the packness. So that's why we had to wake up early. But anyways, uh, you know, navigating to the theaters, you know, it's normal. Everybody's got to do it. It's, it's part of part of life, you know. Average. Um, you know, so we, we're, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. I really don't know what to talk about during this, but uh, I guess I'll just go ahead and say what I liked about the movie with no spoilers ahead. But uh, spoilers ahead, by the way, I'll flash it on screen later on. So, you know, if you don't want to get spoiled, then there you go. But, uh, quick thoughts about the movie without giving spoilers. I thought it was amazing as a FNAF fan. I've been a FNAF fan. Of course, you heard Bonnie say ever since FNAF 2. Uh, I loved this movie. This movie, I think, was one of the best movies I've ever seen in a theater. Blowing every every other movie I've ever seen out of the, out of the water. Freaking Sonic movie, nah. Mario, nah. Spider Verse, nah. This peak, like, <laughs> I think it was one of the best theater experiences of all time. Like nobody really distracted us during it, you know. Well, there was one guy in the theater that kept going like, like, like that, you know. Um, but other than that, it was it was great. Like there was no other distractions. Um, besides that, there was actually one time where the scene where Corey came on, like, you know, like, Corey driving the taxi, there was one kid in my theater that shouted, Corey Extension? And I was just like, oh my god, thank god I'm not the only one who knows who this is in my area. But, uh, yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Um, uh, the animatronics were great. Like, the Jim Henson Company did amazing with the robots. They look so good and I love them like all of them are just peak all of them are great all the actors are great as well Josh Hutcherson as Mike you know freaking Matthew Lillard as William Afton all of them did phenomenal loved it um everybody did amazing with this movie Jason Blum thank you Scott call everybody everybody associated with the movie production you did great all right I love your work. You were amazing. You did peak. You did wonderful. You did great. Um, I guess once the scene ends over here, I mean, there's like another scene after this, but uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and get into the uh, spoiler territory. So as soon as I'm in the theater, you can see me in the theater with Bonnie. I will cut to the spoiler uh, stuff. But yeah, other than that, the movie, this movie was great. Like, this was the best <laughs> movie, I think. Um... <clears throat> All of the set designs, uh, other than that, look great. Like, The Office, peak. Like, mwah, magnificent, okay? That's not just me saying because I'm a FNAF fan. It looked great. Okay, so now that we're in the theater, I'm going to give my spoiler review of the movie. So I'm going to put it up on screen. Spoiler warning. If you have not seen this freaking movie yet, go ahead and watch it and then come back to this video so you can hear what I think about the spoilers in this movie because honestly, the spoilers are the best part about the movie. If you're not 
you know, willing to get spoiled. So if you don't want to get spoiled, just leave and come back once you've seen the movie, because it's a great movie. If you've been a FNAF fan for a long time, you're going to love it. Anyways, <clears throat> let's get into the spoilers. So, the first thing I guess we got to talk about is <clears throat> the, I guess the beginning of the movie, where uh, I guess Josh Hutcherson as Mike is like a mall security guard in the beginning. I already knew that was going to be in the beginning because it was obvious, but... Uh, I, Chica's Magic Rainbow Ice Cream Parlor. I loved that reference. Also, one of the characters was reading a book called The Dream Theory, and that made me laugh because that is a reference to back in the day, uh, back when the Scott was still making FNAF games. Um, there was a theory going around that... The uh, if you if you don't know, uh, that all, the first three FNAF games were just a dream that the crying child was having. Obviously, it's not true nowadays, but back then everybody's like, "What if the crying child was dreaming everything?" Which makes no sense because how would a child dream about like a real life job that's like a middle aged man would be working? That just doesn't make any sense. But anyways, uh, another thing I want to talk about is freaking Matt Pat from Game Theory in the movie. Like, I was not expecting that. Like, I, everywhere I've heard that he's not even gonna be in the movie, right? But seeing him in the freaking diner scene, freaking being a waitress, I'm just like, oh my gosh, this freaking guy. This, this freaking guy, I love him. <laughs> Matt Pat, bro, come on. Like, I was not expecting it, but it was so great to see him. I... Seeing him on the big screen was so... It was so weird. It was just so surreal seeing him on the big screen. But yeah, I, 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 I like that. And also, the cafe's name is Sparky's, which is a reference to uh, a myth about uh, a, a secret animatronic called Sparky the Dog that would appear sometimes in the backstage camera as an Easter egg. Obviously, it's not true, but it's still cool to see him reference. And also, is he actually he's actually in the movie. Like, he's actually like one of the, the destroyed robots you see in like the... I think it's the backstage area of the of this movie's depiction of the restaurant, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, he's there. He's uh he's there, which is amazing. Like him Sparky actually getting recognition is crazy in the in in this movie. And also you can see Shadow Freddy in in the backstage uh, as well, which is is pretty cool. Um but yeah, that's uh, that's the first part of this segment. We're gonna go move on to the next one where I talk more in depth about about stuff. So cool. I kind of like how Chica's cupcake in the movie it has more screen time than freaking like most of the other characters in the movie. It's so crazy, right? Like you'd think the cupcake wouldn't be as important, but he he, he appears quite a lot. Like there's this one scene. Where, I forget who the characters are, I think it's Mike, pretty sure, it, listen, listen, I like, w I watched the movie in the morning, and then when I got back, I fell asleep, and now, I'm editing this right now, so, <laughs> I don't remember, but, there was this one scene where Chica sends the cupcake through the vent, to attack, I think it's Mike, I'm pretty sure, uh, and then Bonnie's there, for some reason, I don't know why Bonnie's with Chica, but he's there, <laughs> he's just, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, there's several scenes with Chica's cupcake, and there's, like, this one scene where, like, um, a bunch of, like, I guess intruders break into Freddy's because, uh, they want to ruin Mike's reputation to get the custody of his sister Abby, uh, because they think that Michael's not doing a great job of protect of, uh, protecting her. So, the aunt ha hatches a plan that's just like, okay, yeah, what if we sabotage his job so that way the court sees that, you know, he's not doing a good job, so they take Abby away from him, and yeah, because Mike's in a bad place right now, so yeah, so that's why things happen, I completely forgot what I was originally talking about with going into that, but uh, yeah, that was insane, right? <laughs> that, that was crazy, yeah, no, I remember now, it's the freaking scene where the guy's in the kitchen, and he opens the fridge, and the cupcake is there, and it basically, like, eats his face off or something. Um, and there's another scene where another guy gets, he, he's, he's scared, he, so, he, he, uh, he sees 
uh, his friend getting eaten by the cupcakes, so he runs into the supply closet, he turns to the light, and Bonnie's behind him, and if you know Bonnie from FNAF 1, he likes to go in the supply closet, and he basically murders that guy, <laughs> so, you know, and, um, there's another scene where I think somebody, some guy, which is one of them, tries to leave, and he gets, uh, killed by Foxy, because Foxy runs down the hall and kills him, just like in the game. He runs down the hallway when he leaves Pirate's Cove. And then there's a, the last uh, intruder gets bitten by Freddy. Just complete head completely just chomped by Freddy. And, man, I was so disappointed that my theater did not shout at the top of their lungs. Was that the part of 87? Because that would have been peak. But nobody said it. Not even me. Because I was expecting them to say it, but they didn't say it. So... They're not cultured like me. <laughs> Sorry, other moviegoers that were watching the movie with me. You have no taste of Five Nights at Freddy's like me. I know everything about this franchise, including the books. Which, by the way, speaking of the books, there was a Fazbear Frights reference in the movie. Frickin' Ella from 1.35am shows up. And also, I guess, from the novels, but... It's mostly the incarnation from Fazbear Frights shows up as a springlock suit. Which, uh, I was not expecting that. I was not expecting Ella, of all characters, to show up in the movie. Which is pretty crazy. Because Ella is such an obscure character in the FNAF series that I don't know if most people would know who that is, but... Whatever. Um... And, uh, yeah, also Balloon Boy's in the movie. Several times, actually. Uh, he's like this little mini figurine that, like, appears throughout the movie and is, like... Basically, like, jump scare material, because every time somebody sees him, they always, like, zoom in on his face, and, like, they play, like, a scary sound, like, dun, like that, or something like that, and even during the mid credit scene with Cory, because Cory's in the mid credit scene, which I thought was great, like, there would, no, I don't know what other mid credit scene there would be, but he's basically, like, you know, after seeing Abby with Golden Freddy in the, the taxi cab, he's just, like, somebody knocks on the taxi, he's like, no, 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 I'm, no more, I'm, I'm, I'm done. And then the, the the cab door opens and closes, and he's like, What the frick did I just say? And then Balloon Boy is on the freaking seat next to him, and he's like, Ah! <laughs> and then that was, it was great. Um, but yeah, every time Balloon Boy showed up, I didn't really get scared, like, much at all. I don't know why. I, he just, it, it just didn't scare me. Um, but there was one thing that did scare me. It was, like, the, the child, uh, one, one of the dead kids in, the, in Mike's dream sequence, like, turns around and has, like, black eyes. That did actually scare me, because I wasn't expecting it. And that's actually pretty scary. So, props to them for actually sort of scaring people? I don't know. <laughs> I personally think the funniest part of this movie is during a scene where Mike, Vanessa, and Abby uh, are, are, are they, like, they want to build a fort for the animatronics, and, like, the animatronics help them actually build the fort, which is pretty cool, which I didn't expect, and, like, this upbeat music starts playing, which actually felt like a real, I was watching a real movie with the FNAF characters in it, which was surreal in its own, and <laughs> during one of the scenes when Bonnie and Foxy finished putting, like, a, like a, like a table or something on, on, on another table that's, like, upside down or whatever, Bonnie just falls over! <laughs> it's so fucking funny! <laughs> Oh my god, it's, it's so good, and then Abby's like, are you okay? And then Bonnie just gives a thumbs up, and I think that was one of my favorite parts of the movie, personally, but it's just so funny. Like, it's, <laughs> like, this movie's tone is so bizarre, like, it switches from horror to comedy in, like, two seconds. Oh my gosh, it's, it's actually so good. Um... <clears throat> But I don't think there's any more scenes to cover with the animatronics, because I'm pretty sure I covered all of them, besides the part where Bonnie falls over, which is one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie, like I said. Um, but yeah, I guess we could roll into uh, William Afton as Spring Bonnie, uh, which was great. I think his line delivery was freaking awesome. The way he's like, I first I killed your brother, now I'm gonna kill you! Like... I, th there was no, Matthew Lillard, peak, <laughs> I literally stuttered on my words, because I, I, I literally have no idea what to say, because his performance as freaking William is so good, 
So, like, I can't be mad at him. He's too good, okay? Scream Man, and also Shaggy, is too good. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, and also, we do get a Springlock scene, which I am very thankful for, because I, if this movie did not have a Springlock scene, all of those memes would just fizzle out of existence. Like, it would be like Thanos snapping his fingers. They would just d disappear, die, burn to ashes, reduce to atoms. But I'm glad that they did it. However, I do wish it could have been a little bit more brutal, to be fair. Because but all you see of the Springlock scene is just Matthew Lillard and the freaking Spring Bonnies just going, <coughs> just like clutching his chest and like kneeling to the ground. And like there's no blood or anything. And it's just like, but it's kind of underwhelming, honestly. Because in the mini game, I'm pretty sure there is blood. So that, there, be no, no blood in this is just kind of off-putting. I wish it was done a little bit better, but it was still good. Um, yeah, I, I think it was, I think it was still good personally. And, and I, I also thought the, the, the animatronics were just gonna gang up on freaking William and start punching him and kicking him and stuff. But no, it's the freaking cupcake that sets off the spring locks. God dang it! Every time with this freaking cupcake, this cupcake is gonna be the main protagonist of this of this movie, more so than Freddy himself. Like, I'm pretty sure the cupcake gets more screen time than Freddy himself. Why? <laughs> I don't understand it. This freaking cupcake. I get that they wanted him to have more of a purpose, but my god, he appears so much. <laughs> He literally bites an ankle, he bites someone's head, he freaking sets off the spring locks and spring spring body. He does too much. Make him do less in the next one, okay? <laughs> um But yeah, uh I I don't really know what else to talk about, because you know, seeing the movie once, your brain just kinda forgets some details. Um, which I definitely do. I forget a lot of details. So, if I remember anything, I'll add another entry. So, yeah, I probably will do that. Oh, yeah, a big one that I wanted to cover was the Living Tombstones FNAF 1 song playing in the credits, which brought me almost to tears because of how much nostalgia that song gave me, and as well as just being a fan of this, of this franchise for as long as I have. It's it's crazy that I got to listen to that song in, in the movie theaters of all places. Just it was it was crazy. And also they kind of remixed the song as well cuz it's not the original. It's not the original that plays, it's like a remixed version of it. Um which I think is a good choice cuz if it was just the original song, it wouldn't have as much of an impact. But I do like <clears throat> that they used a remixed version cuz I think it does sound better. Or not better, but at least like as good as the the original, because the original FNAF One's Living Tombstone song is peak. Like, it's why the series took off as well as Markiplier playing the f of of the game. Freaking Living Tombstone made a song about it, and everybody loved it. So it's a franchise. <laughs> That's all you could say about FNAF is that it's a franchise. Um, uh, uh trying to think of other stuff. Uh, besides the fact that <clears throat> in the credits, you can hear the puppet's music box, um, playing, and you can also hear, like, uh, the, 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 the glitchy voice from the FNAF 2 minigames, like, spouting letters, you know, the freaking ones that go S, A, B, like, you know that? It's, it spells out, come find me. Um, I don't know what that means, but... Hopefully, it's setting up a sequel, and if you're wondering, by the way, no, there is no after credit scene for this movie. Sadly. I waited, and waited, and there was nothing. So, a little bit disappointing, because literally, the Mario movie end credit scene, I missed it, because I was like, there's, there's not going to be an end credit scene during the credits. And there was. <laughs> but for this movie, I wait, and there's nothing. I just have a bad... I have a bad history with freaking end credit scenes, honestly. <laughs> um, but yeah, I really do hope that the puppet appears in the next one, because that would be pretty cool. Um, it's, I, it's weird, though, because I saw a, a teaser that showed the puppet with Freddy, 
in like a thumbnail for the movie, but that scene wasn't even in there. So, somebody lied to me. <laughs> somebody lied to me because I didn't see the puppet anywhere in this movie. Um, maybe besides like a little drawing on the wall, but yeah, that's really about it. Um, I do think the set design, like I said, is great. Every room is, 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 is so good. Like, I love the animatronics. I want to hug Freddy. I saw Daco's video of him and his, his YouTuber friends visiting the set. And I want to hug Freddy. And I can't do that because I'm not a big YouTuber. But who knows? Maybe one day I'll get to hug Freddy. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Like I said before. If I think of anything else, I'll put it in the next segment. So, just be prepared for that. Oh yeah, one last thing I wanted to talk about, I guess, for this review is that, uh... Golden Freddy didn't even have much of a freaking appearance as I was expecting, because he was just kind of there <laughs> for most of the movie. Like, all he does is he kills the aunt who wanted to sabotage Mike's office job at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. He kills the aunt. He goes into the cab with uh, Abby and gets driven to Freddy's by Corey Kenshin. Yes, the Corey Kenshin, the YouTuber guy. And he he leads her into the pizzeria and then he just dis he's gone. There he, yep. Yeah. It's it's so crazy that the cupcake has more of a presence in this movie than Golden Freddy. Like such an important character in the lore is shafted by a freaking cupcake. I feel like I should make a skit about that, because that would actually be pretty funny, but... Yeah, that's... I don't know how to feel about that, I just... Golden Freddy looks so cool, too, like, he had such a, like, an original design. Like, he has, he has, like, one blue eye and one missing eye. And he's got, like, a missing ear as well, kind of reminiscent of Withered Golden Freddy from FNAF 2, but... He's not even in the freaking movie for as long as... Freaking Cupcake, that freaking Cupcake, I'm going... Maybe that's when the movie was called Bad Cupcake in pre-production, because that's what the freaking movie was called when they were still making it. Freaking Cupcake. That's why, because he was so- he's in so many freaking scenes that I I freaking hate this Cupcake! Oh yeah, also the stuffing in the suits was pretty weird. Because at the beginning of the movie, we see this security guard, which apparently, uh, uh, his name is Fritz before Michael gets the job. Uh, his name is Fritz, he gets the job, and he- dies by Foxy. Which, by the way, Foxy does do his little dum 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 song from FNAF 1 that you can hear sometimes in the game. He does do that, which is pretty cool. I, I enjoyed that. I, I I like that. I like that they added that. Um, and he gets stuffed into a suit. Which suit? Uh, t t probably the, 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 the stuffed Freddy corpse thing from the game. You know how, like, when you die in the first game, you can see, like, the backstage camera is is Freddy. It replaces the endoskeleton. It's probably that. Um, but yeah, the stuff in, into the suits was kind of a little bit corny, because, like, the buzzsaws in, in the face, in the inner face shell is just, like, you could have done better. <laughs> like, why did you make it look spring locks? I get why they didn't because I don't think the FNAF 1 robots have spring locks not that I'm aware of pretty sure they don't I get why but the buzz saws just I don't like them like, like you could have done something else like maybe once the the, the the mask is on their face like have it puncture their 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 skin or something in the face so that way it's like stuck to them like maybe have you know how like have like staple papers together it's kind of like that but more brutal and you're not stapling papers, you're stapling a mask to someone's face and stuff. Um, but yeah, that's all I had to say about that. But I guess that's going to wrap up the, the FNAF movie review that I have. Um, again, like I said, the movie is great. If you're a fan of the franchise, you will love this movie. It is so good. Um, I will definitely pick this up on all media I'm gonna get the Blu-ray version, I'm gonna get the, the digital version on YouTube. Uh, I don't know if I'll watch it on Peacock, because I heard that it is, it also, you can also stream it on there. Um, 
I don't want to do that. Because <laughs> I want to go to the theater and watch the movie, because that way they'll get enough money to get a sequel. Which, by the way, they've already got quite a bit of money uh, by this movie's release. And I think this is one of the top grossing horror movies ever right now. So... There's probably going to be a sequel. I hope so. Because... Matthew Lillard did say he signed on for three movies, and also Scott confirmed a long time ago that there's going to be at least three movies if the first one does good. And it did, so there's probably going to be another one uh, well, based on the FNAF 2 location, which I'm stoked to see because my boy Weird Bonnie is going to make an appearance, which is going to be great. And also, by the way, Withered Foxy makes an appearance in this movie. Uh, he is... Um, it's during the scene where Max gets her head crunched by Freddy. Uh, you can see with Withered Foxy's endo head in the back of the room. Pretty sure. So, they're already setting up a sequel. So, you know, it's gonna be kinda cool because I FNAF 2 is the first game ever played. So, you know, I'm a little bit excited for that, but it's whatever. But anyways, thank you guys for watching this. Thank you for hearing my thoughts on the FNAF movie for still uh, listening to this. Probably not, but... I just wanted to ramble on about the movie because I I have nobody else to ramble on to it with. So, you know. Uh, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you guys want to see more from this channel, hit the bell. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.